In our previous two videos about testimony, we wondered when you are justified in believing testimony. In this video, we will think a little bit more about how testimony actually works. I mean, what happens when somebody testifies to something and, and you come to believe it? Uh, is that a way to get knowledge? Like in, in what cases do you get knowledge? Um, and, and, you know, in what sense is this a source of knowledge? And I'd like to start with that second question. Right. In what sense is testimony a source of knowledge? Well, here's an idea that you might have. It's the idea that it's, in a sense, really not a source of knowledge. Right? Testimony might, in some sense, be a sort of knowledge, a source of knowledge for me. Right? I don't know something. You tell me about it, and then I know it. I mean, so I got to know something. Okay, but. You might think that all that happened is that the knowledge got transmitted from you to me, right? You had the knowledge and you transmitted it to me, or maybe you copied it or something like that. And now I have it too. And so there already has to be knowledge and then testimony can send it or transmit it to other people. So this would be what we might call a transmission view of testimony, right? Testimony isn't really a source of knowledge. Right? It doesn't generate new knowledge in the sense of things that nobody knows. Rather, what testimony does is it takes the knowledge that's already there and it spreads it out among more people. Right? So that's a way to think about testimony. Um, is that the right way to think about testimony? Well, before trying to answer that question, I'll just point out that, that even if it's the right way to think about testimony, this is certainly no reason to think badly about testimony. Uh, for instance, memory works like this as well, right? If you know something through memory by remembering it, then probably you already needed to know it beforehand, right? I mean, at least you, you need to have formed that memory at some point, and then it's just there and there and there until you remember it, and ah, okay, now you have this, this knowledge by memory. Can't be something that's sort of radically and completely new. Um, there are some subtleties here. Right? Maybe when I remember something 20 years later, I see it in a different light. I understand something about it that I didn't understand the first time. But okay, let's bracket that, although we will see some of those subtleties reappear when we think about testimony. Okay, so let's think about testimony. Is it the case that through testimony, I can only come to know things that other people, those who testify to me, already know? Well, I think the answer to that is clearly no. Sometimes through testimony, you come to know things that nobody knows, that nobody else knows. I'll give you some examples. In fact, I'll give you three examples. Here's one example. Suppose that I am chasing an escaped gorilla through the inner city, right? There's a, an escaped gorilla and he is running through the inner city, choosing these dark little alleyways. And so I come across a man and I say, hey, um, did somebody run by here just now? And the man says, yeah, yeah. Maybe the man has drunk a little bit too much. He's sitting there. He says, yeah, yeah. I saw a very burly big guy run past just two minutes ago. Okay, this gives this testimony gives me reason to believe that the gorilla came past here. Right? Even though the man who testifies didn't know it was a gorilla. Right? He didn't see it was a gorilla. He thought it was a big, burly man. He didn't know it was a gorilla, so he clearly doesn't know that a gorilla went by here. But I now know that a gorilla went by here. Okay, So that seems to be a case where the person who testifies doesn't have knowledge, but based on the testimony, I form this knowledge. Okay, um, here's another case. Suppose that the gorilla got into a house, right? And I don't want it to get out. I don't want this gorilla to escape, right? It needs to get back to the zoo. And so I posted, like, let's say I'm, I'm with the police. I posted an officer in front of the house and I posted an officer at the back of the house. And they both have to check whether the gorilla goes out of the house, right? And after an hour, when I come back with the, um, I don't know, uh, the people from the zoo who have the, uh, the uh, stun gun or something like that. So I come back with them and I ask the officer at the front of the house, I say, did the gorilla escape from the front? 
And he says, no, no, he didn't escape from the front. And then I go to the officer at the back and I say, did the uh, uh, gorilla escape from the back? And they say, no, no, he didn't escape from the back. I now know, based on their testimony, that the gorilla is still in the house. But they don't. Right? I mean, the officer at the front has no idea what happened at the back. The officer at the back had no idea what happened at the front. By combining this testimony, I know something that they clearly didn't. Okay, so I know something that nobody else knows. Um, here's something else. Maybe uh, there's only the front door, right? That's the only way the gorilla can leave. But um, instead of posting one officer, I'm going to post five officers. And I have a reason for that. Uh, I know that these officers are, I mean, they're, they're just not very good. Uh, they tend to nod off, right? They don't get enough sleep at night. They tend to nod off. Uh, not all the time, but, you know, if they're standing there looking at a house for an hour or so, usually they'll nod off for about five minutes or so during the hour. So you can't fully trust them. Okay, so I put five police officers there uh, at different locations, but all in front of the house. And I say, watch the front of the house. I come back, I ask each of them, did the gorilla leave? And they all say no. Now, none of them knows that the gorilla didn't leave, right? Because all of them probably nodded off for a couple of minutes, and so they don't really know that the gorilla didn't leave the house. But I combine all their testimony, and I know that the gorilla didn't leave the house because it's extremely improbable that these five officers all nodded off at the exact same moment. So... Three cases where I think testimony can give me knowledge that nobody else has. Of course, this doesn't mean that testimony doesn't work through transmission. I'm not claiming that testimony doesn't work through transmission. There's a way to re-describe all these cases. Like what I know, what I get from this police officer, this unreliable police officer maybe, is that they didn't see. Like officer one didn't see the gorilla leave and officer two didn't see the gorilla. Leave. And then I combine that, right? Uh, I mean, that's the knowledge that gets transmitted uh, and I combine it and I now know something new, right? I mean, there's nothing mysterious about that. And maybe there is a story you can tell about how this works through transmission, right? The officer at the front door transmits the knowledge that the gorilla didn't leave through the front door. The officer at the back door transmits the knowledge that the gorilla didn't leave through the back door. I combine it, I know that the gorilla still is in the house. Maybe that's okay. Um, so I'm not claiming that this shows positively that that testimony doesn't work through transmission. But what I do claim is that it shows that, you know, reasoning about, trans, uh, about testimony, using testimony, uh, interpreting testimony, it's complicated. And what happens is a lot more than just this person knows something and they sort of copy paste it into my mind, right? And getting testimony can actually lead to knowledge that nobody had before the testimony was gotten. That's the lesson that I want to draw from these examples. Okay, here's another question about testimony and transmission. Um, and we've already kind of answered it, but I would like to, to give you some more um, cases, including one that has been discussed a lot in the literature, uh, to get a little bit a little bit more insight into what's happening. So, here is one idea that somebody might have. If somebody tells me that p, right, where p is some proposition, if somebody tells me that p, and I come to believe p based on their testimony, then, and this is the hypothesis, then I can only end up knowing p if the person from whom I got this testimony also knows P, right? So you tell me that P is true. I believe you. Do I know P? Well, the hypothesis is only if you also know it, right? Suppose that you just guessed it. Like I go to you, I ask you how many species of fish are there in the North Sea? You see 700, you say 712. Let's for a moment assume that that's true. Um, I come to believe it. I know something that's true. I'm justified in believing it. Okay. Uh, do I know it? Well, if you just guessed it, if you just made it up, it would seem strange to say that I know it, right? So maybe what needs to be the case is that you know it, right? If you know it, then you can give me knowledge. If you don't know it, then you can't give me knowledge. Well, is that right? Um, here is, here is 
a case that has been discussed quite a bit in the literature. Suppose that we have a teacher at a secondary school um, who is teaching biology, but this teacher is also a creationist. So this teacher believes that uh, God created all the species, like maybe even a young earth creationist. God created all the species full and complete 6,000 years ago. Uh, our theory of evolution is wrong. That's what the teacher believes. But the teacher, what the teacher doesn't believe in is they don't believe in, in, in uh, teaching their own um, uh, religious beliefs to, to children. Uh, they just teach the official curriculum. So the students don't even know about this. They don't know about the teacher's creationist beliefs. They just sit in class. The teacher just teaches them the theory of evolution from the course book. Uh, that's, that's what happens. So here's the question. Can the children learn, like get knowledge about evolution from this teacher? And most people in the literature seem to say yes. People can get knowledge. These, these students can get knowledge from this teacher. Right? They don't even notice that the teacher doesn't believe the theory of evolution. The teacher teaches it in a completely correct way. Um, students can come to know the theory of evolution in this way and can come to know truths about evolution in this way. Even though the teacher doesn't know any of those truths because the teacher doesn't believe them. Right? The teacher doesn't believe that there's evolution, so they don't know that there's evolution. But the kids come to know that there's evolution. <coughs> if this case works, then it's a case where um, testimony can give knowledge even though the person who testifies doesn't have knowledge because they don't have belief. Okay, so that's interesting. Here's another case. It's a case I, uh, I made up uh, myself based on the earlier cases I gave you with the gorilla and the police officers. Suppose that I have only one officer watching the front of the house and it's one of these unreliable officers who tend to nod off for five minutes every hour. Okay, so I have only this one officer and I'm sitting there and I'm not watching the front of the house, but I'm watching the officer. So I watch the officer for an hour and they don't nod off. I mean, they tend to nod off, but this time they don't nod off. So I've seen that. But they, they, I know it. I know that they haven't nodded off. They don't know it. Right? They know that they often nod off and that when they nod off, they, they don't really realize it. Right? They sit there, they nod off, they wake up again. They don't even really realize that they've nodded off. Uh, so they, they know that they're not very good at, um, at judging whether they have nodded off or not. Okay, so now I come to this officer and I say, hey, did the gorilla leave the house? And the officer says, no, 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 they didn't leave the house. And my contention is this, they don't know it. They don't know it because they're not justified in believing it, because they're not justified in believing that they didn't nod off, right? So the gorilla, for all they know, the gorilla may have left the house while they were nodding off, right? Falling asleep and then waking back up again. But I have been watching this officer all the time and I know that they didn't nod off. And so I am justified in believing that the gorilla didn't leave the house. Because I know, the officer themselves doesn't know, but I know that the officer is reliable, that they've watched the house really well for the entire hour. And so this would be, the, be a case where testimony gives me knowledge, even though the original person doesn't have knowledge. In this case, not because they lack belief, but because they lack justification. They aren't justified in believing that the gorilla didn't leave the house. I am justified in believing that the gorilla didn't leave the house. Okay, that's where I want to leave that. Um, I think the lesson here is that testimony is uh, complicated, right? It's not just, oh, I've got some items of knowledge. I copy paste them into somebody else's mind. That's not a very plausible picture of, of teaching and learning anyway. Uh, but it's certainly sort of, it doesn't do justice to all the things that can happen when I'm given testimony. I might just be in a different position when it comes to interpreting the testimony, um, when it comes to knowing whether the testimony is justified, whether it comes to combining the testimony with other knowledge and so on. And so, yeah, I mean, of course, there's some kind of transmission going on in testimony, 
but things are way more complicated than a simple model of that transmission might make us believe.